Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath. And I'm Bree. And this video comes hot on the heels of our favorite movies of 2019. Mm -hmm. Kind of a recap. Yep. Uh, this is this is the big one. This mm -hmm. is favorite releases of the year. We're talking about Blu-rays, DVDs, maybe some 4K, mm -hmm. music releases. And a book. And there's and there's one maybe book. Maybe a book. A book that came in. It slipped under the mm -hmm. wire at the last minute. Yep. Now, guys. But, but Heath. What? Isn't physical media dead? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing that so many people are talking about on YouTube. It's easy to get the clicks with the fear and all. Mm -hmm. So many people are like, well, physical media is dead. Physical media is dying. Well, I think this is one of the best years mm -hmm. of physical media in my mm -hmm. entire collecting lifetime. Yeah, and according to our pile over there, it was a great year. The, yeah, all of these are this year's releases mm -hmm. and they're all stellar. Mm -hmm. Listen, here's a, this is a fact. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. There are mm -hmm. more releases coming out every single week than in the mm -hmm. history of what we do. Like, mm -hmm. it's like 60 releases every single week. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I want to start with Warner Archive, who I think had a stellar year. They got mm -hmm. like some cool horror stuff. Like, Three out of the four weeks of October, they put out a new horror release from the archives. It was fantastic. But yeah, that's what I, great. What I really want to focus on in this video is the animation restoration done by Warner Archive this mm -hmm. year. They gave us some so many stellar cartoons restored beautifully. So I'm talking Popeye, the 1940s volume one and two. There's a there's a third volume of this, but we mm -hmm. have not yet added it. Mm -hmm. Added it to the serial at Minute Archives. But right. this looks so good. Mm -hmm. These cartoons have never looked as good as they do here. I mean they are so clean, so bright, so mm -hmm. so shiny. <laughs> I also shiny. shiny. I also have to shout out Johnny Quest. Mm -hmm. You guys, this so this is the complete original series. We've done full reviews for most of this stuff, so mm -hmm. this is not going to be reviews. But like, I never, I can't believe how good the show looks. Yeah, it's stunning. It looks like it's just been pulled from a comic book page. Such bright popping colors. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bright popping colors, the Jetsons, the complete original series. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the early '60s Jetsons. There was a later '80s version. That's not what this is. This mm -hmm. is '60s Jetsons. And what really amazes me, and it's it's not going to be able to translate. I could show you screenshots, but. When you see it with your eye, the the brightness, mm -hmm. how clean everything is, right. how crisp the lines are, yeah. psychedelic, cut, like it's so art deco and just like yeah. all of these things, That's cool. it comes across so well and it's never, like I've, I have the Jetsons on DVD and mm -hmm. I did a side-by-side -side comparison. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, like yeah. things that look kind of like avocado green are yeah. like bright, bright. lime. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah. whoa. So all yeah, that those is- Those older TVs could have never- Right. Shown that. Yeah, and it's it, tube TV. It's so it's only for the animators. Right, you have to look at the intention of mm -hmm. the animation and be like, well, this was what was on the cells, mm -hmm. and then by the time it got here, but it's just amazing. It is really amazing. So that's another reason when people are like, physical media is in its twilight. I'm like, well, we're getting the best stuff we've ever gotten. So yeah. if this is the twilight, <laughs> let's bring on live uh, it up. Live it up. <laughs> so uh, where do I want to go from here? I got I have one Criterion Collection disc that mm -hmm. I want to talk about, and it is. Detour. Now this came out uh, this year and it is, it's, the thing about Detour is that they never thought that they were going to be able to make it look really good. It's uh -huh. one of these movies that they thought that all of the, all of the natural, the, the source elements were yeah. gone or unrestorable. Mm -hmm. the, the, the George Lucas Foundation has donated a lot of money towards the restoration mm -hmm. of this and there is a, it's, it's, it's not immaculate, like it's not like, oh, it's a perfect print, but yeah. it, it is so, it's a million miles mm -hmm. from every other way that I've watched this movie. Yeah. It's got like grain and you can see like textures and facial mm -hmm. stuff. Like it's amazing what they did with this movie. This movie, I, I dare say they brought this movie back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, where do I want to go? You know what, let's go with mm -hmm. Shout Factory. Okay. Shout Factory put out, I, I don't have a lot of Shout Factory mm -hmm. here. They did do a lot of cool stuff this year. The Universal Horror Collections that mm -hmm. they've been putting out. But my favorites are This Island Earth, which is um, a movie that I think maybe got something akin to Redemption this year. Because this, yeah. is, this is a movie that's been... Um, I'm trying not to be controversial, but I'm going to say like Mystery Science Theater 3000 yeah. has tarnished This mm -hmm. Island Earth. Um, well, that's what I knew it from. Uh, and then we watched it without MST3K. And, and it's, it's a great movie. It's, it's, it's a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of social commentary in here as well mm -hmm. that Definitely. gets completely missed if you're only watching this for humor. Don't watch movie. Don't watch a serious movie just ironically. Don't watch, mm -hmm. you know what? Don't watch anything ironically. Try to, 
always try to experience something on the the terms that the filmmakers created it with. And this mm -hmm. movie is one of my favorites. Before, you know, at the time that this came out, it was a pinnacle of science fiction. Mm -hmm. There's a, an incredible documentary on here from Ballyhoo Films. Anything that Ballyhoo Films touches, mm -hmm. special features wise, is going to be a, a home run. They yeah. do some of the best special features in the entire business. Then, also from Shout Factory, I really wanted to talk about the Street Fighter collection because this is the year that Sonny Chiba came home. Mm -hmm. All of the Street Fighter movies have been restored. There's uh, their new 2K scans, I believe. New 2K scans. Mm -hmm. um, they look better than they've looked in the past. I've got these movies. I've bought these movies several times. They they can't kind of get passed around the public domain collections and things like that. But this goes back to like source material. They look fantastic. These are iconic martial arts movies. Mm -hmm. You know, Sonny Chiba, sort of a counterpart, kind of an answer to Bruce Lee in the 70s and the stuff that he, th these movies are crazy. If you haven't seen these movies, check out our full review. Uh, you can, if you go to serialatmidnight.com and just type in Street Fighter, any, anything you're looking for ever. We've done hundreds yeah. of reviews. Go to serialatmidnight.com and search for them. On that note, we're gonna switch companies because Arrow Video this year put out the sister Street Fighter collection. So we go, from the Street Fighter to the Sister Street Fighter collection. Mm -hmm. This is the entire Sister Street Fighter collection completely restored as well. And you actually have some options. You can watch like R-rated versions or the unrated versions of some of these. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. This, this whole package, the, just the fact that we got both of these franchises this year from two completely different even the art is very similar right like yeah, it almost looks it like totally it was is. was it coordinated I, it, the art actually the art itself is by the same guy but they're from you, different you can tell yeah it it's like it. it's mm -hmm. like it's like they synced it up they're like yeah. okay well we're gonna do this wonderful the, for fans of martial arts and for fans of exploitation cinema what a win for for this mm -hmm. year so i highly recommend those also from uh, arrow this year we got the beginning of the year started mm -hmm. like january i think it was yeah. we got the water world mm -hmm. um, which you love i love this i don't know that i love the movie i always right. struggle with the movie because mm -hmm. i always want it to be something that it's not quite mm -hmm. but the I, I keep revisiting it and mm -hmm. it, it always keeps me coming back but this yeah. edition holy cow you guys we were actually arrow sent us one of these to give away we gave away a water world blu-ray on the channel yeah. so if you're new to serial at midnight we've gotten hundreds of subscribers just in the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. if you're new to serial at midnight we do occasionally do giveaways Sometimes we get we give stuff away sometimes we give stuff <laughs> away. we gave this away and uh this uh, was incredible again uh, Ballyhoo Films Special Features. There's a feature-length documentary mm -hmm. about the story of Waterworld, and it is unbelievable. Just how, how, why, what happened, what went wrong. It's 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 incredibly mm -hmm. impressive. So this is uh, a fantastic release. And then the last one that I want to talk about from Arrow is a movie that maybe you aren't familiar with, and it's FM. Uh, this is something I'm going to have a lot more to say about this in the future. Because uh, I'm not done with this. There's a review for this at SerialAtMidnight.com. But this is about, it's kind of a, uh, we got to save that radio station mm -hmm. movie. But it's not, it's kind of, it came at a time, late 70s, early 80s, when it's 1978, when independent radio voices were in fact dying. Mm -hmm. And you can see this in WKRP in Cincinnati. Right. That's what I was thinking of. You see this, in fact, I think I've got, yes, I have this. Mm -hmm. This is going to factor into the equation. There's a whole oh, another book, another book, but that's not from this year. <laughs> no, so, it's, but there's a whole story to be told about the the decline, mm -hmm. the last gasp of independent rock radio before mm -hmm. the corporations took over, and that's yeah. kind of what this movie is. It's the last gasp. It's got some great people in here. We're going to talk more about this, but you guys, you have to check this out. The soundtrack is fantastic. We have the soundtrack on mm -hmm. vinyl. So where do, you know, I'm going to jump to Umbrella <laughs> Entertainment. There's a couple of Umbrella releases that I want to talk about. Thank you so much, to This has been a cool year. I, like We have been able to connect with Umbrella. Mm -hmm. Serial at Midnight has connected with Umbrella Entertainment out of Australia. Mm -hmm. And they put out a lot of cool region-free releases that I think have been sliding under people's radars just mm -hmm. because they're Australia. And, you know, like yeah. the Hollywood North American system tends to be kind of focused on a particular thing. Yeah. But these have been a revelation for me, you guys. These drive-in delirium collections. Uh, there's a video about this. And these have sold me so many movies. Like mm -hmm. I was talking, we were having lunch with Griggs. Uh, and I was talking to, to Griggs about like, it promotes the sale of, like you're like, yeah. I have to see this. Yeah. When you have like, it's, it's 
almost 200 trailers on mm -hmm. each one of these and they jump all over from genre to genre and there's I guarantee you you know we're all film fans here mm -hmm. we're all like we love movies yeah. but there's so many things like you think you're a film fan and you're like I've never heard of that well there's what is so many movies and from so many different places like it's really hard to know Australian movies yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Italian movies French movies Spanish movies Bollywood. Bollywood. Mm -hmm. Well, what's crazy is just like how many things that haven't, they're just off the radar yeah. because we haven't had access to them, mm -hmm. but they're on here. And yeah. the, the, we, again, we're living in a wonderful time mm -hmm. when we're seeing things that we didn't know exist. And then mm -hmm. like we get special editions of them. So again, the narrative that physical media is dead is uh, clickbait. I, I, I thoroughly believe it's clickbait. Mm -hmm. Um, MVD rewind collection. I have a couple of MVD releases I want to talk about. And first is, Double Dragon. Now, listen, Double Dragon is not a it's not a good movie. I don't think anybody is like <laughs> Double Dragon's a great movie. My favorite. Yes. I, I mean, it probably is. And I'm, I'm sure I don't mean favorite. to degrade yeah. anybody by saying that, but I think universally we kind of accept that this movie falls short of the mark for um a good video game adaptation or whatever mm -hmm. maybe it has cheesy fun it's really interesting as far as when the ideas behind it but what the MVD Rewind collection does with their releases is they get the people that were involved with the movie to mm -hmm. tell the story of the movie yeah. behind the scenes and it opens up a whole new thing so mm -hmm. in the case of I've been talking about this all year every time I get a chance to talk about this I'm like boy that Double Dragon Blu-ray so one of the writers mm -hmm. is now, he basically was in charge of Breaking Bad. Uh -huh. um, another one of the writers went on to be a film director. And mm -hmm. they're kind of talking about how, like, well, we wrote this. Yeah. And then the director didn't, like, the director had no confidence from the crew. Uh -huh. And then the studio got involved. Mm -hmm. And, like, we don't know how we feel about this. Let's change this. And it's yeah. just kind of a... A lesson it's like a documentary about how you start here mm -hmm. and you end up way over here and you have no control over it yeah it's fascinating and it mm -hmm. it redeem it can give you a greater appreciation for the movie yes and for all movies because you think about all movies go yeah. through that process and that's so yeah. much of what these these releases do is they show you the story behind the movie mm -hmm. and so any, even if the movie is not necessarily your cup of tea you mm -hmm. do end up with a greater appreciation for what went on uh, through the stories yeah. of the people who were there. And they know, they know what they made. It's not like anyone's thinking not they made Citizen, Citizen Kane. Uh, on that note, Double Impact, you know, last year Lionheart was on my top, top, the, my favorites. Yeah. Not top, my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and this year we get Double Impact, which is uh, another Jean-Claude Van Damme movie mm -hmm. with, uh, this is one of the, he has multiple twins movies where he's <laughs> starring opposite himself. <laughs> but look at the special features on this thing. Wow. It has so many special yeah. features. This entire red box is special features. Mm -hmm. So many deleted scenes. They go, to, again, they went to his house for Lionheart. It may be the same interview session, but they're like at his kitchen table. Mm -hmm. He's drinking out of a tin tin, like a, the Adventures of Tintin. Oh, or, yeah. or in French, Les Adventures du Tonton. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Canadians are angry right now. Um, but it's just really, like, again, behind the scenes, you, mm -hmm. you, you learn all these stories from mm -hmm. the people who were there. Uh, and it's, it's, I love We them. do love our bonus features and behind the scenes. Well, it, yes. Stuff. And so many times the mm -hmm. special features on like a major release. Okay, so Aladdin. Mm -hmm. I loved Aladdin 29. I know some of you guys didn't. I get it. It's That's cool. okay. That's fine. I loved it. I mm -hmm. loved Aladdin 2019. We were watching the 4K. Mm -hmm. There's like five special features on there. And you're like, well, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. They're like 10 minutes combined. Like it's yeah. it's pretty, and it's it's very puffy. Yeah. It's so rare to get the story behind mm -hmm. a movie these days to because it's like Lord of the Rings special feature. Yeah. It's like, it's a secret now. It's like, they want to suppress it. Mm -hmm. I really think that that might be it is they want to keep things kind of a secret. They want to control the narrative. And if you know a lot That's, about the movie and how it was made and the background and all that, then they lose some of their control over the narrative. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice work. So, let's talk about some cartoons, right? They've been saving okay. these. So this year has been an incredible year. So, okay. For animation? Animation. We had the animation restoration. restoration <laughs> and then we've got... So Universal has given us... I think maybe... Okay, three of these are from Universal and one's from Warner Brothers. So we got He-Man, the Masters of the Universe, the complete series. Mm -hmm. The complete series. We got She-Ra, Princess of Power, mm -hmm. the complete series. Now these are the originals. Uh, I know She-Ra has a, a reboot, and mm -hmm. He-Man has a reboot coming with Kevin Smith. Big bucket of wind, man. Um, 
We also got the complete Voltron, both mm -hmm. Lion Force and Vehicle Voltron. Mm -hmm. And from Warner Brothers, they reissue, reissued the complete Thundercats. Wow. So That's a lot of great animation. In Yes. <laughs> As a, as a, an '80s cartoon fan, as someone mm -hmm. who grew up during this stuff, like we have in when we're up, when we're in the the studio, the the movie room, you uh -huh. can see like He Man's over my shoulder, mm -hmm. Thundercats is over. My, we had these already. Mm -hmm. The only thing we didn't have is I did not have Vehicle Force Voltron. Mm -hmm. Have all of Lion Force. We bought these again, one to support these releases and yeah. to say again, we're talking about like, like we want these, keep them coming. Support what you're interested mm -hmm. in. Don't wait for it to go to like eight bucks used from someone else. You need to send the message to the studios mm -hmm. there's a market for this i'm interested in this i can't believe you know when he-man came out the first time on dvd some 13 to 15 years but it's mm -hmm. been a while it's been yeah. a minute um they were like 40 to 50 bucks per half season mm -hmm. now we get listen i paid like 39.99 for this or something like that yeah. i think it was 42 dollars i paid for this and i thought i was Great getting deal. a steal mm -hmm. still as we make this video it's 29.99 oh, wow. on amazon i'm like what what thundercats when i bought that back in the day again it was like 40 bucks a volume mm -hmm. here's the whole series for it's like 30 35 dollars i think mm -hmm. what uh, like what a golden age this is yeah. like if this is physical media dying enjoy it because i'm telling <laughs> you we've never had this before we have never had this kind of mm -hmm. access before now i do have to say caveats there is an error with season two season two episode oh, there are no. some Yes, there are some episodes of He-Man season two, not mm -hmm. the entire season, but uh, I think a couple of discs are affected where they are. The episodes themselves are a little smushed mm -hmm. and and like vertically stretched. Yeah. Now it's a problem for sure. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people would know about it if there wasn't a stink. If, if you if you're something. just watching it, mm -hmm. it's not super obvious. It is a little tighter, mm -hmm. but unless you're doing a side by side or you know this stuff very well, I don't know that people will notice it. Mm -hmm. I emailed Universal as soon as the problem was pointed out to me. I double checked it. I was like, let me check my DVDs. Mm -hmm. Yes, I noticed it. I emailed Universal. I did not get a response back. I know other people that emailed Universal. They did not get a response mm -hmm. back. So I don't know that we're going to get replacements for this, but still at $29.99 or however much this is whenever you mm -hmm. see this video for a hundred and was it like 160, 130 episodes of He-Man and the Masters mm -hmm. of the Universe with documentaries, with the, the Christmas special. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a steal. You, grab it. Grab yeah. it. And then hopefully we can get some, some justice for that. The... Uh, for Barb? Justice for Barb. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can get some justice for the, the aspect ratio problem. I got a couple of independent, so I wanna, like independent releases I want to talk to you guys about. The first is Tower of Evil. Th this is a different name in the UK. I mm -hmm. can't remember what it's called in the evil UK. Evil Tower. The <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the Evil of the Tower. Um, but this came from uh, Scorpion releasing, and it I'd never seen it. It was a blind buy for me, but it was mm -hmm. really cool. Mm -hmm. It was very um, it's it's seventy nineteen seventy two, and it's very grindhousey, very that exploitation horror kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Not enough people talked about this. That's one of the reasons I want to throw this into this video is because it's um, uh, it's just really, I'll try to kind of show, show maybe the back. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just very atmospheric, gothic. Mm -hmm. This is, it's really cool. It's It looks fantastic. It's mm -hmm. been restored really well. It's got some cool special features on it. I also wanted to shout out from uh, Synapse Films. It's Django the Bastard. Now this is not the Italian language version. It's probably like Django il Bastardo or something, but uh, <laughs> this is the um, the uh, the English language cut. I mm -hmm. don't know that the there are multiple, you know, the way Italian film is made yeah. is that there's there's a dub for different markets. Mm -hmm. But this is the English language version of this movie. But I just had to shout this out because while the movie itself is not like, oh, it's fantastic, we so rarely get spaghetti westerns mm -hmm. in their, like, restored from their aspe original yeah. aspect ratios. So many spaghetti westerns have died on those big public domain collections. So when someone takes the time... Um, and I should also point out, like, Arrow has done some great spaghetti western mm -hmm. restorations. The Sartana set last year. Yeah. Ringo. They did a Ringo two-pack, I believe. Mm -hmm. But when a company like Synapse just decides to support one of these Italian westerns, uh, it's cause for celebration. Again, really good stuff out there uh, for those who are looking for it. 
One major label release, and then we're going to move on to our last studio. But I have to shout out The Wizard of Oz 4K. Mm -hmm. I know not all of you guys are into 4K yet. Um, quick word on that. Well, PlayStation 5 is coming in 2020, and it has a 4K drive. That's the drive mm -hmm. that it will be using is a 4K yes. optical drive. So mm -hmm. all these people that are like, I don't know if I'm going to do 4K. Well, if you upgrade to a PlayStation 5, you are 4K. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you probably already yeah. have a 4K TV. You will have a player. Mm -hmm. I do not think that we need to be worried about 4K. I think that it is just beginning, and the future is bright. So The Wizard of Oz. Well, you know, there's people that think that... I was going to say, like, I was going to ask that because I go, what about... 8K and then 12K. <laughs> 8K is coming. 12K is coming. Then 36K. <laughs> mm -mm. It's actually not. Um, we cannot spend our life worried about We can't. This you thing. can't spend your life like that. We're living here. Your mm -hmm. tomorrow is not a guarantee. Enjoy today. Today we have 4K and I got to tell this you. This looked great. Wow. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's I can't say it looks like it was shot yesterday, but it does no, look like it was shot maybe in the 60s or the 70s. Yeah, like, and it looked really good. I was noticing really like good. like Dorothy, you can see like the, her face for mm -hmm. the first time it was like you can see like her face mm -hmm. like she looks like you just reach out and touch her mm -hmm. you can count the brick the, the thing is the, the thing you say is like you can count the bricks on the yellow brick road but you actually you can like you yeah. can distinguish mm -hmm. brick by brick by brick mm -hmm. and i know the that colors were really good not everybody's into the like well i'd like to watch it in beta but it's really yeah. good so much work has been spent on this to make this look fresh mm -hmm. and revitalized and this it's it's stunning yeah, it is it literally is. stunning mm -hmm. um and it, it's it was less apparent during the the black and white like the sepia yes, tone bookends yes, right but when they open that door it's just yeah, like i was saying the colors were amazing what yeah yeah so this is one of the best mm -hmm. uh releases of the year last but certainly not least i have to shout out mill creek entertainment mill creek continually uh, blows me away. Mill Creek's heart is where my heart is at. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good, yeah. you know, I have, a, I, behind the scenes, I have a wonderful relationship with Mill Creek. Mm -hmm. And I think it, that's part of why is because we're kind of headed in the same direction. Yeah. So many of the things that they put out are the things that I care that about. That you're interested so, in. And, and they seem to just continue to get better and better. Every single year, mm -hmm. they just grow and get, like this year, I get last year, I'm, I remember saying this last year, it's like they, they're the company to watch. Yeah. And this year, they it's had uh, the stack mm -hmm. we have for Mill Creek is bigger than any other stack. And it's yeah. because that's where my heart is. Yeah. I want to start out with the Malibu Express. So I pulled Malibu Express, but you guys were talking about the Andy Sedaris movies. And this year, 2019, we got like a half a dozen of these movies, the Andy Sedaris catalog. I think mm -hmm. there's 12 uh, of these Malibu Bay films. And I think we've gotten six of them already with two more coming. I could be wrong about that, but they're, they're putting the whole thing out, mm -hmm. all of them. And they've gotten these fantastic restorations by the American Genre Film Archive. Going back to the original film negatives or the prints. Yeah. Uh, however they've done it, they look fantastic. They've never looked as good as they look here. So I only pulled the first one for this video, but this has been the year of Andy Sedaris on Blu-ray. Another thing we got from, this is kind of a partnership uh, with Mill Creek and uh, Kit Parker Films, I believe, is involved in this. Uh, these are licensed from Sony, but it's the the Noir Archive series. Mm -hmm. There are three of them. Uh, each volume compiles nine uh, film noir films, movies, <laughs> that have not been released before. And mm -hmm. they are all restored. They all look really good. And there's that's some... 27 movies. It, that's what I was going to say. It's 27 <laughs> no, Now, they're not all strictly noir. Some of them play a little bit, little, maybe crime a mm -hmm. little bit. They don't necessarily fit uh, into the noir genre per se, but mm -hmm. they're close enough yeah. for celebration. And so mm -hmm. yes, 27 movies that we did not have from this genre mm -hmm. before this year. And yeah. so that is, again, like if you guys That's haven't exciting. picked these up, it is super exciting. And frankly, I'm still making my way through some of these. I'm still still mm -hmm. working my, it's 27 movies, but yeah. they look great. And it's been just discovering something because mm -hmm. these are deep cuts. These are like deep from the, the Sony archives. And so you're just like, whoa, I didn't even know this existed. Uh, this has also been the year that we've been blasted with mm -hmm. kaiju and blasted. Mill Creek blast. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't make it sound so good, but... Well, I don't know. It's invaded by kaiju. <laughs> we've been blitzed. So Mill Creek started out with... They, we got Mothra. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, have to, I'll save it until the end of this. So we got Mothra. We got... As, as of the end of 2019, we have the first three shows from Ultraman. Mm -hmm. So we have Ultra Q, Ultraman, and Ultra 7. And we also have Ultraman Orb 
and Ultraman Jeed. Uh, Jeed. <laughs> um, and so that alone, just that's from Mill Creek. Now, also at the same time, the Criterion releases the complete Showa era of Godzilla, which oh, yeah. I want. Mm -hmm. We don't have it yet because it's mm -hmm. just a financial matter. That's just, it's, yeah. a, it's an expensive box set, but. All this, it's like this synergy. All this stuff's mm -hmm. coming out. Kaiju is just like Mothra, Godzilla. Yeah. All this stuff here. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then last, but certainly not least from Mill Creek, I do have to shout out the complete series of Charlie's Angels. This has been, uh, for the duration of the channel, you can go back. People will get, are going through, I get notes from people. They're like, I'm going through the archives. Mm -hmm. They will see like years ago, like two, three years ago, I was mm -hmm. like, if only we could get Charlie's Angels on Blu-ray. It's just begging for a Blu-ray release. Mm -hmm. This year, Mill Creek made it happen. We have a full review of this set. We have more Charlie's Angels content coming, but mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite box sets of the entire year. 70s TV goodness on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Could not be happier. Yeah. Um, Music-wise, let's switch to music for just a second. I only have one that I want to show you. There's more that I wanted to talk about. Listen, this year uh, we got an Elvis box. We didn't get it, but an Elvis box mm -hmm. set was released every yeah. performance. So after the 68 comeback special, Elvis goes and does a an 11-show stand at the International Hotel in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They released every single one of those shows in a, in a, in a set. Uh, chronicling um, that residency, mm -hmm. that eleven show residency, that's high on my list. Yeah. Uh, the Motown, they they've yeah. reissued the number Motown, the number ones, and it's mm -hmm. eleven CDs yeah. of Motown that's number quite ones. A collection. Yeah, like I really want that one as yeah. well. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is the Bob Dylan Rolling Thunder review box set. This is uh, basically a huge, I think it's fourteen discs chronicle of. The uh, the seventies tour, the Rolling mm -hmm. Thunder review. Now this the movie. There's a documentary from Martin Scorsese that we talked about in our favorite movies mm -hmm. of 2019. Yep. This is kind of like the audio companion to mm -hmm. that, and it has been such a joy. You know, this was gifted to us it by was. our friend Joshua Jeb Kuga, mm -hmm. uh, the adapting writer of Bubba Hotep and the Cosmic Bloodsuckers for Joe R. Lansdale, and it was also. Joshua Jabakuga, he also writes, he currently works for AEW, All mm -hmm. Elite Wrestling. So if yeah. you're a wrestling fan, um, Joshua Jabakuga is mm -hmm. doing great stuff there. But this was also, this was one of his Christmas presents to me. It's called Disgraceland. He gets you, man. He gets me. Mm -hmm. Josh gets me. He really does. Uh, it's this book. This is the book I wanted to talk about. It's called uh, Disgraceland. And it's rock stars behaving badly. It's kind of like the true accounts of... The really terrible thing. I mean, they talk about like the Chuck Berry thing that he'd done with the cameras and the bathroom, and they talk about. Do you know about that? It's a little tease. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is mm -hmm. lewd. It's not like uh, oh, and then so on. But it's it's yeah. It's like ooh, murders. Mm -hmm. uh, they get into the Sid Vicious thing. Let me let's see who we have. Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, a lot of people shot. This mm -hmm. book has a high death count, a high death toll, body count. I like what they did with the cover. Yeah, can you guys see the cover? It's like there, each one is revealed to be a monster mm -hmm. underneath. Starts with Elvis, starts with Fat Elvis, mm -hmm. ends with Skinny Elvis when he was young, and they kind of go full circle. But what I love about this book, aside from the fact that I am such a music fan, yeah, and, and an Elvis fan, and an Elvis fan, and I mean that kind of goes to a bit. Sorry. This whole period, no, but this whole period, like this <laughs> yeah, is my thing. It right? is. It's kind of my bag, baby. Um, but they, there's a narrative that is kind of woven mm -hmm. through. So we, the, the author, Jake Brennan, mm -hmm. um, it's he's so skilled. It's such an incredible book. He he weaves these narratives, and they're not fictionalized. But he's taken the real story and he's made them into and he's editorialized them. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of where we don't have an actual account, he's mm -hmm. kind of written an account like a novel. Like it's almost like he's not putting words in anybody's mouth necessarily, right. but he's composing this is what it would have been like. Yeah, storytelling is mm -hmm. exactly right. And he weaves each story into the next story. There's a through line and then I'm, it starts with Elvis and mm -hmm. then it circles all the way back and it's mm -hmm. like boom. Uh, it's masterfully done. Mm -hmm. And I gather that uh, this is also based on a podcast. Um, oh. Disgraceland, a rock and roll true crime podcast. Oh, cool. So I'm going to have to check that as yeah. that out as well. But I had to shout this book out. This has blown me away. Looks like it just came out in October of 2019. So mm -hmm. I, I hadn't even heard of it. I didn't even know it existed. But thanks to Josh Jebkuma. There's so much stuff out there. There is. Because physical media is in a great place. 
because there's a lot of cool stuff out there happening mm -hmm. like all the time. And you know yep. what? 2020, looking forward to 2020, mm -hmm. so many cool things on the horizon. Things yeah. I'm all, things I know about that I can't talk about that mm -hmm. I'm already excited yeah. about. I was like, man, yeah. we're in great hands. We're in a great place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll last forever, but we're living into the today. And yeah. today, things are pretty fantastic. So yeah. I recommend all of this stuff. All this stuff is among my favorites. What are some of your favorite releases of the year? I would love to continue the conversation in the comments below mm -hmm. as we talk about. Listen, there are a lot of companies that are not represented here. There's no Severin. There's no Vinegar Syndrome. I know so many of you guys are deep, deep into that stuff. And I would mm -hmm. love to know what some of your favorite releases were from those companies. But yeah. again, let's just keep it going. So guys, thank you very much. Thanks for hanging out with us throughout 2019. Yeah. Onward and upwards to better things in 2020. forward to seeing you in 2020. It's going to be fantastic. Guys, thank you. Take care. Until next time, we will catch you later. later.